What are the top 10 things you must do when you move into a new home? Stay tuned to find out. Hey there, it's Hal Cohn. And Chris Cohn, we're with Cohn Realty Group. So if this will be your first time to our channel, please make sure you click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified each and every time we release a new video about living, working, and playing in the amazing Roanoke Valley and real estate tips too. That's right, yeah. If you or your friends and family are thinking about moving here, please call us, text us, or you can send us an email. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Well, congratulations, yay! You, All right, way to go. You have purchased the new home. We're so excited for you. And one of the first things you want to do is be prepared as you step foot into that new home, you unload the boxes, all of that good stuff. But there's some certain things that you must do as soon as you move in to make sure you have a smooth move into the new home, right? Smooth move. That's, That's what I'm right. talking about. Yeah. And one of the first things you're going to want to do, probably before you move your stuff in, if at all possible, is deep clean <laughs> yeah deep cleaning is very important this is definitely the number one answer we get when people are at we're saying you know like I have to clean the house first. So whether it's you with your elbow grease and your mop and pail, or if you hire a professional, that's fine too. But we recommend that you get it a really good deep clean. So what does that include for you? Oh, for me, that would be baseboards, blinds, mm -hmm. dusted, cleaned, uh, good sweeping and mopping. Yeah, you always are particular about return vents. Like yes, making sure that the return filters vents, yeah. are changed. And yeah, if you list with us, that's the first thing I'll look at. Make sure your return duct is clean. Yes. And new and filter. Yeah, high and low. Just hit it all. Windows, if you can. Everything. That way, you walk in with like your feeling and you know that it's sparkly clean to your standards. That's right, because broom swept clean, clean to a seller may not be the same to you as the buyer. That's true, so that's the requirement, right? Yes. It has to be broom swept clean as you take ownership of the property. That's right. Okay, and then our favorite thing that we like to switch out whenever we move is what? The toilet seats. <laughs> Everybody wants a fresh and clean toilet seat when you move into your new home. Yeah, so that's important. Whatever is important to you, make sure you get that done to make it feel like your own. So let's jump right into number two. Ooh, this number one's two. really important as well, but more on the safety side of things. This is gonna be change the locks on your door. Change those locks, baby. Yeah, because lock, okay. we want to. I did not. I don't have a lock as a um, <laughs> a as prop a, as a prop today. <laughs> but yeah, so you never know how many babysitters, in laws, parents, neighbors. neighbors, friends may have a key to the house that you just bought. So the safest thing for you to do is either change all the locks out or have a locksmith come over and change locks for you so you can get new keys so that you are the only one who has access to the property based on key. Right, yeah, another thing to consider at this time too is an alarm system. Is there one currently in the house that you need to reactivate or do you wanna install one that would that help your level of security? Just decide and go ahead and do it. That's right, because yeah. if you forget, if you're like us, if you forget and not do it then, it may not happen for a year, two years down yes. the road. So we want you to be safe, so put this on the top of your list. Yeah, and so along the same vein as safety, let's talk about child and pet proofing your home. Because this is one really important thing that some people may overlook, like, you know, letting the dog out in the yard and then you realize, I don't have a fenced in yard anymore. Oh, and I used to. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't want to think, I mean, you kind of don't think about those things, but I recommend if you're child proofing, there's a lot of different articles on this, but you are probably well versed on how to child proof your home, but this is a completely new environment. So get low and check things out oh, from maybe so that perspective. We got to get down and crawl on the floor then maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. I, that would be your job. Yeah, absolutely. I'm up for it. <laughs> and set up that safety gear. What are some of the safety things that you can remember? Or oh. for pets or children. Uh, I would say you could have safety gates for the pets. Definitely, for steps. Yep. And yeah. you could have safety gates for the children. Yeah. <laughs> you can have the little uh, 
things on the doorknob so the kids don't get into rooms they shouldn't, especially like closets. I may have cleaning solutions inside of them. Right. And then inside the kitchen, you get those little locks on the inside of the drawers and the cabinets yeah. so that they can't open those and get where they uh, shouldn't be. Yeah, and another thing to think about that would have probably slipped my mind, but as I was drafting this up, mm -hmm. is uh, those packing and moving supplies and those, remember those cleaning supplies we talked about? Oh, yeah. So definitely have a safe place for this, but also um, make sure that your packing supplies are put away or in an area that the children can't get to it or your pets. Like, I mean, think about some of the hazards. There's scissors, there's plastic wrap, there's tape. Goodness gracious, could you imagine? If Those got blades for cut, cutting boxes. Yeah, the box cutters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just be careful with that. Be sure to child and pet proof your new space. All right, let's keep going with one of my favorites is introducing yourselves to the neighbors. I remember when we first moved into one of our houses out in Bonsack that, you know, I was like, oh, right, we're here. Where's the welcome wagon? Where's my pies and cakes and cookies? <laughs> And I never got that. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of hello and welcome to the neighborhood. We're glad you're here. But it taught me that I shouldn't have to wait for them to make the initiative. You can go around and say hello to your neighbors and introduce yourself. Absolutely. So get outside of your new home. Go and ask questions of your neighbors. Introduce mm -hmm. yourself. Ask them like, hey, where's, when is trash pickup? Yeah. When is recycle? Do they even do recycling here? Yeah. That type of thing. So you can get a feel for exactly when you get that trash out. Because you're going to have a lot of trash when you're moving in yes. from unboxing that's and true. unpacking. So yeah. you're going to know when that's going to happen as soon as possible. Yeah, and you can also ask them like, hey, what's your favorite restaurant? How close are we to a trail? I want to find out where to walk the dog. Even things like um, what they love about living here, because I think you can find out a lot from your neighbors, some pretty candid oh, information. Yeah. So go ask some questions. I think that's a great, great point. Yeah, they can help you uh, identify like where the nearest urgent care, emergency services, that type of thing yeah. are as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's our next point too, is ah, getting to you know go. your See? neighborhood. Well, let me back up real quick because I had a friend in Tennessee. She was very shy. She moved to Tennessee and she said to get to know my neighbors, I held a dessert party. And she mm. said that it was very much out of her comfort zone, but, and her house wasn't settled at all, although it did incentivize her and motivate her to get some of the mm -hmm. basics done. Yeah. But she had people just drop in over the course of a couple of hours, very casual, and they now have a really strong bond with their community. So I think that's a sweet That is sweet very, idea. very cool, yeah. We, we were supposed to do that in our house. We're gonna have a big <laughs> housewarming party so we could get everything settled yes. and everybody over. And we just kind of let it go. It's been five years. <laughs> five. So maybe we'll get there. Five years. Yeah. So yeah, so take our advice, not based on our actions, okay? Right, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and have a party. Play in a party. Um, so get to know your neighborhood. I, I like your idea about making sure you know where the closest ER, urgent care, doctor's offices, those things are. How close are you to the fire department? Mm -hmm. You know, those types of things that are going to be important to you. God forbid you have a major event when you first move in. That would be awful, but right. you need to know where those places are just in case. Yeah, and you'll need to know things around your neighborhood, like the convenience store that's close by, your local grocery store, those kinds of things. This is kind of a no-brainer, but yeah. but just write it down. You may forget. Like and um, all part? Yeah, dog park mm -hmm. and restaurants, of course. I'm surprised oh. you didn't say that. How could I forget? <laughs> restaurants, breweries, and I, you know, me, I gotta have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, what's the best breakfast spot? Yes. What's the best lunch spot? What's the best dinner spot? Can I walk there? Do I have to drive there? But you gotta know the local places. Yes. And so, the next one is really important before the movers even show up know where your furniture is going to be. You need to make sure you have that pretty well mapped out. And you you were telling me something that uh, that you've seen clients do. So a lot of our clients will ask us to measure rooms or they will look at the floor plans online and before they even show up they're able to have their rooms configured. Yeah. I do not operate that way. <laughs> I would have to bring it in, move it around, probably have the movers put it down and then we'd figure oh this is the best configuration. But those of you who can do it online with a tape measure Good for you. Yeah, that would be great. And I'm sure the movers like that much better than your way. Yes. FYI. Well, I let them put it down and I just have to move it later. I just get it out of okay. the way. So I That's wouldn't make nice. them do that. Yeah, so if you can do that beforehand, whether you're actually there and you can physically walk around and map things out, 
or online, like you said, mm -hmm. using the floor plan or some of the measurements you got. That's a great idea. And then lastly, make sure you're prepared to unpack the most important rooms first because you're going to want to get settled in a few rooms that you're going to use all the time. Can you guess what those are? Kitchen. Definitely the kitchen. Because I want to eat. And I think it was our parents that said, always make your bed. Go ahead and get your bed set up, make it, so that way you have a nice, comfy place to sleep after unpacking. I can definitely appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And yep. then bathroom, of course. Bathroom, yep. What's make sure you got one? toilet paper. Yes. And what's another one? Where we are right now. Our office? Yeah, you want to get your office set up. If you have to work remotely or if you need to order things online or whatever it is, go ahead and get some a good workspace going. So get those rooms set up first and you'll feel already like it's home sweet home. I'm glad I'm learning so much today. <laughs> So the next thing you must do as you start moving into your new home is to make sure you prioritize those repairs, updates, and maintenance. Yeah, so, so when you did your home inspection, before you bought your home, you would have gotten a list on there of repair items, defects, as well as, hey, these are things you should probably get updated or you should do for maintenance purposes. So use that list to help you prioritize and you want to look at the safety features first. Yeah, absolutely. And that can be kind of a general punch list mm -hmm. for checklist for as a guide to go by, but then you can go around and do some of the things on your own. Write all those down and in my case what I would do is just prioritize them, right? Yeah. Right. I would be calling a handyman or a contractor <laughs> and say, "Hey, here's the things I need done. Come over here, let me know how much it's going to cost." But That's for great. some of you folks, you're going to be the type of person who is able to do those, enjoys doing those, and wants to do those. So make sure you make your list, you check it twice, and then get after it. Yeah, and, and another tip that we've heard that works really well is go ahead and establish goals for dates. Like, I'd like to have these five things accomplished by this date. And go ahead and try to hold yourself accountable, put it on the calendar, make sure that you try to hit those goals because... After a while, it'll be five years and they're still not done. <clears throat> yeah. So another tip that we are going to do at some point in time is have that housewarming party that Hal talked about. And this is an excellent way to really just motivate yourself again. Say motivation, baby. <laughs> and we learned this from our neighbor out in Bonsac. She said, yep. if you want anything done around the house, have a party or invite overnight guests. And yes. I was like, uh, okay. And it's true. If you have your overnight guests come down to visit, you hustle and you get the house clean and you get it set up and everything's done. So that's a great um, driving factor. That'd be a great way to get anything you want to get updated as far as like a kitchen or anything like that, as well as mm -hmm. those maintenance repair because you want it to look as pristine as possible and look pretty for and your guests. And functional. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a great point. Uh, yeah. Let's move on to safety again. This one's super important. Oh yeah. Yeah, make sure that those smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors are installed and that they're working. Yeah, because you're gonna, or, and also make sure oh, you've right. got your fire extinguisher as well. Yeah, thank so, you. So, yeah, you wanna make sure those are in working order and ideally you want one in every bedroom, mm -hmm. you want one outside of the bedrooms, uh, if you've got an upstairs area or wherever those bedrooms are, you're gonna want at least one on the main living area as well, like living room, kitchen, those areas. Sure. So as many as you can get, you're gonna to want to buy the bulk pack and go around and make sure you've got them in those spots so that everybody can hear them if something was to happen as far as a fire, smoke, that type of thing. Yeah, and it's great that now they have the combination smoke and carbon monoxide, so it's all in one. And so we recommend that you purchase those. And they've got 10 year batteries now too. Oh, so you don't have to worry about changing them that's out. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And also, this is an excellent time just to review family emergency plans, mm -hmm. and especially in a new environment. You know, take the time to talk about family escape plan and also things like where your meeting spot would be. You can even have a fire drill. Our kids did this with us. We, they wanted to have a fire drill, so we did. But you can think about any equipment you may need, like those fire escape ladders. Mm -hmm. So this would be a great opportunity to do that. Yeah, to purchase those, yeah. And I remember setting that up for the uh, fire escape plan here at our house. The kids absolutely loved it. And that was also a good reminder for us to be able to like, mm -hmm. here's our meeting spot. 
how do you contact us if we get separated and those types right. of things. So it was a good reminder for us and I think they probably remember more of it than we do. Right, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking, where's our meeting spot? Yeah, oh, we'll I have know. to review that. Okay. Across the street. Okay, there you go. So let's move on to the next thing that you must do as you move into your home and that's to make sure you know exactly where the fuse and box is and the water valve shut off, yeah. right? And and. Most houses around here do have breaker boxes, not fuse boxes anymore, but there's a few that have those little twisty fuses. So if you have one of those, know where that is, as well as your breaker box for electrical. Because if you're like me, you're in the kitchen one day and you hear something in where the electrical panel is going bzzz, and you go check and it's on fire, you're like, oh, I better turn this whole thing off. So I did that and I called the electrician to come over the next day or so to change that breaker yeah. box out because it was so, not safe anymore. So thankful <laughs> that you were here when that happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a good point. It could happen anytime. So you mm -hmm. need to know where that electrical panel is and the water shut off. Could you imagine if the water was busting out somewhere from something mm -hmm. and you didn't even know how to shut it off? So general rule of thumb, that's usually around the perimeter of your home, but that's not always the case. So this information would be found where? Your home inspection report. So you get that home inspection report, do one for informational purposes only at a bare minimum in this market. And therefore you can know some of those things. So like it'll tell you where your electrical panel is. It'll tell you where your main water shutoff is. And if you don't have a shutoff at the house, it may be up by the street. And if that's the case, there's a special little tool you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's to be able to turn that off at the street uh, connection. Hmm. Very good. Yeah. All right. Call so, something new. I know. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know that. That's really cool. So the last thing that you need to do, that you must do as you get settled into your new home is make sure you have all the proper documentation. Go ahead and get your new driver's license, oh your voter's registration, your automobile tags, get everything set up so you're legal and ready to cruise around. Yeah, and you can find all that information online mm -hmm. uh, if you're kind of confused, like, oh, where do I do that? Online services are going to help you there. Yeah, and DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles, has great, uh, they used to do appointment times. So I think they mm -hmm. still probably do. That's a great way to get in there and kind of reserve your spot. But definitely do look at what paperwork you're going to need because... <laughs> Every single piece yes. of documentation you may need, even if it's a stack like this, make sure you take it. Yes, absolutely. Because if not, they're going to make you turn around and then you're going to be... Have to go take a whole nother day to go over there and get it right. done. Right. And not and fun. No, yeah. And I like what I've been seeing around town too. They've got these mobile DMV uh, remote setups, I guess. That yeah, it's like they drive a little bus over. Well, not, yeah, they've got the bus, but yeah. they also have set up at the libraries. It's like okay. DMV will be here from two to four. And I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah. So watch for those. I'm sure those are on the DMV website too. Yeah, that'll make it easier and simpler for you so you don't have to travel all the way to the big office to get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations again, and we hope yes. that you enjoy your new home sweet home. And I'll look forward to seeing you at that housewarming party I know you're going to invite us to once you get settled and you put it on your calendar. Sounds good. Yeah, let's do it.